and welcome to my shop. My name's Dom and in this video we'll be looking at three top tier miter gauges from Jessam, Harvey and Incra. In front of me today I have the Jessam Miter XL2, the Harvey MG36 Compass and the granddaddy of the three, the Incra Miter 1000 HD. It's been around for many years now uh, in comparison to these two here which have really only come out quite recently. Now, Miter gauge is probably not the most exciting tool to review, or most exciting tool in the shop, but like any tool, you really want something that's functional, that you can rely on, um, and that'll make the difference between a pleasant day in the shop or a frustrating one that sees you throwing stuff. It's probably going to come as no surprise that these three high-end gauges all do their jobs well as basic miter gauges. Um, they all do the basic functions well, there's not going to be any surprises there. However, there are definitely distinct differences between the three in terms of the features and in terms of the pros and cons and what they each do really well. So we'll go through that today uh, and in this video we'll go through the features, the specs, we'll have a look at the build quality and the overall fit and finish of the gauges. Uh, we'll also look at the ability of each gauge to be set and make repeatable cuts at 90 and at an angle and then we'll compare and contrast the three at the end. So look, without any further ado, let's take a look. All right, my friends, let's talk features and specs. We'll start with the Jessam Miter XL2. This thing is a beautiful bit of kit. It's all anodized aluminum and stainless steel with the only two bits of plastic on the locking levers for the fence extension and the sliding sock. The fit and finish is flawless. The anodizing, the knurling on the knobs, the machining of all the parts, softening of the edges. There's really nothing to be critical uh, in terms of the materials or the fit and finish on this gauge. It has 45 degrees of infinitely adjustable angular range, which is the least of the three gauges on test here, but is, is plenty for my needs and I'll go into that later on. You'll appreciate this gauge having nine preset angular positions via a spring-loaded indexing pin that lets you snap to 0, 15, 22 and a half, 30 and 45 degrees. The pin fits into a tapered hole in the body, or tapered holes in the body, and I couldn't detect any slop in that mechanism at all, so you can actually trust those preset snap positions. You can lock that pin out, and using the really beautiful vernier scale on this gauge and the laser etched graduations that are clear and fine, uh, you can accurately and repeatably set angles down to 0.1 degrees resolution. And even if you want to be absolutely crazy, uh, you can interpolate between those graduations to get to, I think, comfortably 0 0.05 degrees. No idea why you'd want to be that precise with your angle, but, you know, it's there. And it is a very nice standout feature of this gauge. The fence extrusion is rigid. It's straight. It's square. There's no complaints there at all. The Jessam has a unique feature in that you can set a known reference position for your fence or the extrusion location. And what that lets you do is return to a known location and actually calibrate your linear scale to reference off the edge of your blade. So you can actually you know, use the linear scale, unlike other gauges where the numbers don't really ever mean anything. Uh, the extension will give you 920 millimeters of capacity and it has a sliding stop on the end. The linear scale will reference off the end of that stop as well. The miter gauge comes with a flip stop that is rigid, slides smoothly, uh, it's easy to read the linear distance from the indicator and it will take a sacrificial fence up to three quarter inch thick as well. And one of the highlights of the gauge I think is the fit in your miter track. It has three eccentric adjusters and they're located at the extremities and at the center of the rail, which means you get really a, a no slop fit in your miter gauge. And it's the best of the three gauges here in that regard. Okay, moving on to the Harvey MG36 Compass, another really premium looking gauge. It's all anodized aluminum, stainless steel and brass. There's no plastic to be found on this gauge at all. The fit and finish is extremely nice. It has 60 degrees of angular range and seven preset angular positions. 
at 0, 22 and a half, 45 and 60 degrees. So a little bit less than the Jessen and basically you're missing out on 15 and 30 as preset positions. The actual mechanism itself I really like on this gauge, the little push button mechanism is very easy to use um, and probably the nicest of the three gauges here. Laser etched graduations in the contrasting white and black scheme are really easy to read. The graduations are fine and precise. However, without a vernier scale, like on the Jessam and the Incra, if you really need to set precise 0.1 degree resolution angular settings, the Harvey isn't going to be as accurate as either of the other two gauges. The fence extrusion is straight, it's rigid, it's square, and I particularly like the beveled ends on the extrusion, uh, and I'll talk about that later, but for my use, that's actually a really handy thing to have. The fence extension gives you 920 millimeters or 36 inches of capacity, just like on the Jessen. However, unlike the Jessen, you can actually move that extension fence from one side of the extrusion to the other, allowing you to have that full functionality on either side of your blade if you're going to be using a gauge to take cuts on the left and right of your blade. The fence stop really is a highlight of this gauge. It's a beautifully made unit. Uh, functionally, it's superb. It slides smoothly, it locks in solidly. It's got a nice precise indicator on it, uh, even though the linear scale um, really is just useful in relative terms. There's no absolute numbers on it um, because there is no absolute reference point like on the Jessam. There's a fine micrometric adjuster on that stop which is really cool it works really well it has a resolution of 0.02 millimeters which is crazy but if you're trying to creep up on a cut or get to a really exact uh, cut distance it'll let you do that and i actually found it very useful it also has and, a removable brass very easy to help use. with beveled stock the zero point of the gauge can be calibrated by loosening off four bolts across the top of the body and adjusting from there one slightly disappointing aspect of the Harvey design is with the rail to mitre track fit. It's only adjustable via two points in the forward half of the rail. And so while this wasn't a problem, it didn't provide as nice a fit as is achievable with the Jessam gauge and its three eccentric adjusters. Looking on the Harvey website though, it appears that this may have been a running change as the website now shows eccentric adjusters on the rail. On the side of the Harvey gauge, you can also see the precision machined tapered angular grooves that provide for no slop indexing of the set angular positions. Now moving on to the Incro 1000 HD or MITRE 1000 HD, this gauge is still a very premium gauge but you can immediately tell that it's built to a budget compared to the other two gauges. The materials used consist of zinc plated steel, black carbon fasteners, a lot more plastic for the handles and various uh, fixings, and as well as anodized aluminium for some of the parts like the, the fence. However, even small details like the anodizing on the fence are clearly done prior to cutting the fence into smaller sections. So things like the end of the, the fence extrusion are not anodized like they are on the other two gauges. In terms of the angular range, it has the most range at over 90 degrees, and it has the most number of positive indexing points, effectively giving you positive indexing in one degree increments. Like the Jessam, it also has a vernier gauge and the laser etched markings are easy to read, although not as contrasting as the other two gauges and they are a little bit more difficult to read at a glance. And also while the upside is that you have one degree increments, it also means if you've got uh, your common angles like 45 or 22 and a half, you really have to pay attention to where you're setting the gauge. Otherwise you could think you're at 45 and you're at 44 or think you're at 30 and you're actually at 29 or 31. I'd say my main criticism of this gauge is actually the need to use an Allen key to make a lot of the adjustments. I'm not super organized um, and I tend to lose this Allen key or misplace it a lot of the time so I spend five minutes looking for it every time I need to make an adjustment to my mitre gauge and when I do leave it on my table saw it always tends to get in the way uh, just when I don't need it to. Uh, so basically a lot of the adjustments like moving the extrusion, the fence or extending the extension 
uh, or moving the flip stop carrier on the extension require the Allen key, as well as a fine adjustment on the flip stop uh, require the Allen key. So in terms of the fence, it's a great uh, straight, square, solid extrusion. The flip stop also is nice and solid. There's no slop. Uh, it can be used joined together or as two single arms. It has, a again, a rod to help with um, 45 or angled stock. Um, and I also use it as a bit of a trimming um, adjuster because I hate having to use, again, the Allen key to make those micro adjustments. So I tend to use that, that rod to actually just uh, nudge out um, a cut if I need to. It has these plastic knobs in the back to move the flip stop, but again, they're rough, very sharp plastic, uh, which they, they do dig into your hand. Um, in terms of the rail fit into the miter track, it's actually really good and it has four, well, three eccentric adjusters on one side and three eccentric adjusters on the other. So you can get a really good no slop fit. However, unlike the Jessam, it doesn't have one at the very end of the rail. So it's not quite as nice a fit as the Jessam. Again, it's adjustable to get the fence square in the vertical and horizontal position to be able to calibrate it to a good 90 degree setting. So while the ink relaxed for nothing functionally against the other two, it is let down a little bit in terms of the materials, the fit and finish, and the inability to do toolless adjustments like the other two. Looking at the three fences and extensions, the Jessam and the Harvey have the largest capacity at 920 millimeters, while the Incra has the smallest at 790 millimeters. However, the Incra and the Harvey can both be reversed with the extension running out the right-hand side as well as the left, whereas on the Jessam that isn't possible without some modification. In terms of the adjustment of each gauge for both horizontal and vertical alignment or zeroing of the gauge, the INCRA allows you to make those adjustments using a, a number of bolts. Uh, the Harvey is not adjustable in terms of the vertical alignment of the extrusion to the table. However, mine came perfectly square, thankfully, um, but it is adjustable to zero your 90 degree cut using four bolts and a, a friction fit between them. The Jessam has the best adjustment for the horizontal zeroing or alignment to 90 degrees, and it also has adjustment for vertical alignment. With the Jessam, you have the four bolts or two bolts either side of the fence that you loosen off, and then you have some grub screws uh, inside the body that allow you to dial in um, your 90 degree or your zero point very accurately and incrementally without overshooting and undershooting as I tend to do when I'm trying to zero out the other two gauges. So while I was able to set all three gauges for a perfect zero, the Jessam made life the easiest in that regard. Now, what would a review be without a weigh-in? The Jessam comes in at 3.21 kilos. The Harvey comes in at 3.12 kilos, so pretty much the same weight. And the Incra with its, with its slightly lighter build uh, is 2.86 kilos. But they all definitely have a good healthy heft to them and they all feel like premium gauges, as you'd expect. Now the number one job of a miter gauge is to cut reliable, accurate and repeatable cuts at 90 degrees and other indicative angles. Without that, it's basically useless. However, when it comes to the absolute angular accuracy of these gauges, I'm not naive enough to think that I can do that assessment in my workshop. If you're going to quantify the accuracy or measurement uncertainty of a piece of equipment, either do it properly or don't do it at all, in my opinion. I managed a calibration laboratory for a number of years, and to do that sort of assessment justice, you'd really need properly calibrated and traceable metrology measurement equipment, a thorough calibration process, and multiple samples of each gauge for the data to be at all useful for the purpose of making any categorical statements on the accuracy or measurement uncertainty of each manufacturer's product. Now, what I can confidently say is that in my time using these gauges and running a bunch of test cuts, including flipping boards multiple times to magnify error, changing between 45 degrees and back to zero, and using my uncalibrated eyeballs and stare at squares, I didn't notice any inaccuracy or any lack of repeatability that gave me cause for concern. Um, as far as I could tell, there were no discernible differences between the three gauges and all were more than good enough for my woodworking. And that's to, to say they were basically perfect as far as I could measure. 
You might note in those videos the, the slightly more awkward adjustment of the Inca versus the other two gauges. Now, in terms of angular range, I've never needed more than 45 degrees. And in fact, with more than 45 degrees, for example, 60 degrees here, by the time the cut has moved through the blade, there's quite a lot of wiggle in the gauge because the rail is protruding a long way out of the miter slot. And especially with the Harvey, for example, where the two adjustment points are quite far forward on the rail, there really is a lot of play. Um, in terms of overall play, when the rail is fully in the miter slot, there isn't a lot with any of the three gauges, um, but there is noticeably more on the Harvey and the Infra uh, than the Jessam. When I did some test cuts uh, on purpose using bad technique and applying a torque to the gauge in one direction or another, uh, the error in the cut was still not enough to be an issue for me. Um, however, you definitely can compromise the cut um, more so with the Harvey and the Incra than the Jessam if you are hand fisted uh, or you're you know, cutting a really wide uh, piece where 90 degrees is critical and you might be applying a torque to the gauge. In reality though, I think if you apply correct technique, it's that tiny little bit of play is um, not a problem at all. Now, in terms of miter angles greater than 45 degrees, if you have a longer miter track, like in a router table here, or maybe your table saw has a longer miter track, um, that's where you get a lot more stability. I don't have and haven't had a use case for that, so let me know in the comments uh, if you have. I'd be keen to hear when you need to use more than 45 degrees on a miter gauge. All right, thanks to the uh, three of you who stuck around. So, in summary, the three gauges, as I said at the start, all do a good job as miter gauges. They're all high-end gauges, no surprises there. They can all be set to cut a perfect 90 degrees as accurately as you can be bothered setting them, and they'll all return repeatedly to that setting and they'll all cut accurately whatever angle you want to cut up to 45, 60, or 90 degrees. The Jessam I found to be the best to actually adjust. I really appreciated having the grub screws to adjust the initial zero angle so that you could creep up on the perfect 90 uh, as opposed to the two friction and sort of tap and push adjustment mechanisms on the Incra and the Harvey that I found was easy to over and undershoot um, and it was a bit more of an iterative process to get to the perfect zero or 90 degree setting. The Jessam was much more uh, straightforward um, and you could really creep up on that perfect 90. The Jessam also has the least amount of slop in the mine track which I appreciated with its three eccentric adjusters located at the extremities of the rail. The Harvey was the worst in that regard with its two uh, expansion adjusters, however, as I said, looks like they've uh, rectified that on the website it now shows four eccentric adjusters on the rail and even without that the effect was minimal on the actual cut even when applying uh, a large torque on purpose to the gauges the incro fell in between the two others um, in terms of setting an angle my favorite was the jessam uh, because of the really clear laser etched graduations and the vernier scale on this gauge which is again beautiful and solid um, it meant that you could set a fixed degree setting or a fractional degree setting reliably, accurately, and repeatably. Uh, likewise, on the incro, the repeatability and the ability to set a you know, decimal angle is there. However, with the uh, thin you know, stainless or thin, I should say, steel um, vernier scale, just a little bit more finicky and just not as uh, nice to use as the Jessam. The Harvey love the push button mechanism to change the angle um, however it doesn't have a vernier scale so if you want to go for those uh, sub one degree decimal angles you have to interpolate between the graduations uh, and that's where you know you are not going to get the accuracy or the repeatability you know to 0.1 or 0.2 degrees resolution that you'll get from the Jessam or the Incra so if that's important to you these two gauges are going to be better than the Harvey in terms of the Fences, stops, and linear scales. In short, the Jessam I found to be the only actual functional absolute linear scale of these three gauges. The Harvey doesn't even have uh, a numerical linear scale, it's just a relative 
um, measurement really with the, with the graduations um, with no actual numbers. Um, and the INCRA I've always found frustrating to use the linear scale. One, it's a friction fit to the scale inside the extrusions. And two, you know, you have three moving parts. Um, so I think unless you leave the extension fully out so that your scale uh, is aligned all the time and only use the, the flip stop or the, the sliding um, extrusion, uh, it's really useless as an absolute reference. Um, and also if you move the fence extrusion, you know, it, it doesn't mean anything anymore either. So I've never really used that. Um, let me know if you have, but it doesn't work for me. The Jessam, on the other hand, uh, with that little indexing pin and that feature to be able to reference your linear scale uh, and calibrate it to the edge of your blade, uh, means that you can reliably rely on that linear scale for an actual absolute distance measurement. Um, and also the extension um, you can rely on as well, because the, the number that you read um, is actually meaningful um, in terms of the, the absolute distance from your blade. And it locks in via a grub screw, so there's no you know, accidental shifting of the linear scale. The stops, hands down, Harvey stop is magic, it's the best. It has that little micrometric adjuster, which you might think you know, is, is stupid, having 0.02 millimeters of resolution. Um, but it's actually really cool, I like it, um, you know, sue me. I like being able to make a cut, you know, if, if that piece is off by whatever, 0.32 millimeters, um, I can just dial that in using this micrometric, micrometric adjuster, uh, take another cut and it'll be bang on. So I love that stop. Um, the extrusions are all straight and square, no problem with any of them. Uh, I do like, well, I actually don't really need the ability to flip the extension from one side of the fence to the other, but if you do need that, maybe you're cutting a lot of uh, mitered uh, mouldings where you want to cut on the left and right hand side and you want a, a fixed distance um, stop on both sides, that's where the Incra and the Harvey with their ability to uh, switch the extrusion over from one side or the extension from one side to the other um, are better than the Jessam, which doesn't have the ability to do that. For me, it's not an issue. Um, I can just go without the, the fixed stop um, when I'm cutting on the right-hand side of the blade. Um, and in that respect, the Harvey is the quickest and easiest to shift over as well. The other really important thing for me is just the overall fit and finish and quality of the materials. And here, the Jessam and the Harvey, hands down, are cut above the Incra. The Incra functionally is great. It'll do everything the other two gauges will do, uh, or all the important things, and it'll do things that the other two won't in terms of the ability to cut up to 90 degrees, which is kind of absurd. You're cutting at that point. I don't know why you'd even need a miter gauge beyond about 45 or maybe 60 at a, at a push. Um, let me know if you do use your miter gauge beyond 45 or 60 degrees. I'd be curious uh, to know in the comments. Um, but the Incra, you know, has a lot of plastic, plastic knobs, um, plastic, uh, plastic on the on the fence and the in the extension. Um, it has black steel fasteners. Um, it has zinc plated steel for the nuts and the the main body, um, and then you know nice anodized aluminium. But uh, the Harvey and the Jessam are all stainless steel, anodized aluminium, and brass. Just a tiny little bit of plastic on two of the knobs on the Jessam, and that's the only plastic that you'll see on these. Um, and overall the fit and finish, the markings, the anodizing uh, is just a little bit higher quality than the Incra, which looks built down to a price a little bit more and it is cheaper. So if price is an issue, then you know, maybe you're happy to trade off that, that nicer fit and finish and those nicer materials. Um, it's even little subtle things like anodizing the fences on the Jessam and the Harvey after cutting, whereas the Incra, you know, it's clearly, it's not anodized on the ends and it's clearly one long anodized extrusion that's cut and then later assembled. Um, <clears throat> so for me, if I was buying a gauge right now again, I'd be looking at either the Harvey or the Jessam. Um, and then the decision between these two really comes down to whether you want to cut uh, your angles or be able to set your angles to sub one degree resolution or even 0.1 or 0.2 degree resolution accurately and repeatedly. Um, and whether you value the, the micrometric adjuster on the flip stop um, more uh, and the ability to cut 60 degrees more than 45 degrees on the Jessam. Um, 
For me, it's a really hard choice, to be honest. They both serve me well. Um, I do prefer having the Bernier scale, so I lean towards the Jessen. I also like the ability to actually use the linear scale as an absolute reference to make quicker cuts. Uh, and I like the, the indexing function on that fence. I also like the ability of the Jessen to, to dial in you know, the perfect 90 a little bit easier. Um, however, I do love the beveled fence on the Harvey and the flip stop is great. If I could transfer those things over to the Jessen as well as the push button mechanism uh, on the Harvey to the Jessen, I'd be a happy man. So I think I'm going to leave these two alone, maybe with a bottle of wine, some mood lighting, um, you know, some, some music uh, overnight and see if they can't maybe make a little, uh, you know, Jess V Junior that has both those features. It'll be, uh, you know, just perfect. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. If you liked the video, give me a like, give me a subscribe. And if you didn't like it, you know, be gentle, leave some constructive criticism. If there's something that I've missed that's obvious, uh, or even not obvious, subtle, um, in these three gauges, let me know in the comments, it might be helpful for someone else. Um, and if there's, you know, a gauge that you prefer, um, and you went through the same decision process, uh, let me know as well what you went with and why. Really appreciate watching. Thanks very much and see you in the next video.